The past 18 months have been defined by COVID-19, a virus that has spread with such ferocity across the world, its impact is deep and long-lasting. And we are all trying to adjust to it, being part of our daily lives. It has been the most challenging time in our history, not just across our three hospital sites, the Royal Cornwall Hospital in Truro, West Cornwall Hospital in Penzance, and St Michael's Hospital in Hale, but across the whole NHS. We have done our best to be alongside the people we serve as we care for them, and to best support their families and friends. And we took that approach right from the start. We were not just responding to a virus, we were responding to people. To our people who work here, and the people we serve. And to that end, we ended every meeting of our Incident Command Centre, which we set up in March 2020 to help us organise our response to the pandemic, with a thought of the day from our wonderful chaplaincy team. One of my great heroes is the wonderful late Nelson Mandela. And I'd like to share a quote of his with you. He said, I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. I felt that fear myself more times than I can remember, but I hid it behind a mask of boldness. The brave person is not the one who does not feel afraid. It is the person who conquers that fear. During this past unprecedented year of challenge, it's been my privilege, along with my team, to witness the boldness, the bravery, the courage, the care and the compassion, along with incredible creativity of my colleagues across the Trust here at RCHT. We've been able to witness and to walk with all of them. And in that journey and in that sharing, we have felt so proud to call them our colleagues and to work at this trust. The chaplaincy team have supported our hospitals at the most difficult of times. They've comforted patients and their relatives and have remained steadfast throughout, providing a confidential ear, a space to reflect and mourn, as well as offering encouragement and support across all areas. We're incredibly grateful for their service, not just to our hospitals, but to the people of Cornwall and the Isles of Scilly. And we know how hard it's been for the people we serve when they've not been able to visit their loved ones. To protect the most vulnerable and help reduce the risk of spreading the virus, our infection prevention and control team worked hard to ensure we followed the most up-to-date guidance. Putting in place visiting restrictions was by far one of the toughest decisions we had to take. And yet, our patient experience team, in partnership with our RCHC charity and the friends of the Royal Cornwall Hospital, rose to the challenge and found new ways of helping patients to stay connected with loved ones wherever possible, be that through tablets for video, or phone calls, or through our Stay Connected initiative. Our community has been amazing, stepping in with generous donations of food, gifts, and monetary donations to help ensure our colleagues and patients felt supported. RCHC Charity, working with the friends of the Royal Cornwall Hospital, worked tirelessly to provide things that will make a difference to our patients and our colleagues, including a call to make sure everything's okay. Royal Cornwall Hospital's charity has been really generously supported throughout COVID-19 and thanks to the donations to that fund, we've been able to support our staff, our patients and our volunteers. For our staff, we've given over 100 grants to help them to boost morale, improve their staff rooms 
with equipment such as microwaves, kettles, fridges and simple treat boxes just when staff are feeling low and need a quick boost. We've also been able to support the chaplaincy team as they've been giving out um, energy bars or coffee vouchers to staff as they enter for a shift or when they leave at the end of the day. For our patients, we know that these are really challenging times with restricted visiting and spending time on the ward without your regular visitors can be very difficult. So we have done what we can to help and one of the things that we've been able to do is to supply some activity books and our chaplaincy team have been able to take these around to various wards and the staff there have given them to patients that might be in need of just some distraction to help their time pass while they're in the hospital. Also with funding to the COVID-19 fund, we have been able to revamp a, an area of garden for our staff. We know that taking a break is really difficult and finding a space to do that away from their busy work environments is so important. So we're really pleased to have been able to revamp a space, clear some extra area and provide some extra seating in a garden space behind the tower block at Royal Cornwall Hospital. Also for our staff, we've been able to provide a new seating area in the Knowledge Spa. So this has got some comfortable sofas and chairs and upgraded the environment so that they have a relaxing space to go take a break and hopefully when they can get together to be able to join together for a cup of coffee. Thank you to everyone that's donated to the COVID-19 fund. We've been overwhelmed with the support and just so delighted with what we've been able to do with the funds for our staff, our patients and our volunteers. Thank you. We did and are continuing to do everything we can to support our colleagues. We've provided support to teams through our health and wellbeing offers, including opening a little shop for essential items, the employee assistance programme to help our colleagues' mental health, free evening meals, additional rest areas, wobble rooms and hope walls. We wanted to recognise our colleagues and their dedication to our patients through our own Brilliant New Awards and the High Sheriff Awards, celebrating the achievements of colleagues that have helped to make our hospital special and provide brilliant care to our patients. Our Deputy Chief Executive and Director of Nursing, Midwifery and Allied Health Professions, Kim O'Keefe, was awarded a British Empire Medal for her services to nursing. And colleagues have also been recognised through the National Penna Awards, where RCHT won both staff engagement and improving staff experience and support for caregivers, friends and family with the Butterfly Project. And our ED Cornish Crusaders won the European Sim Championship. The quick transition to new digital solutions wasn't just limited to our patients. Our IT department supported an incredibly fast rollout of laptops and other devices for colleagues to work at home. This allowed us to reduce the number of people on site and thus reduce the risk of the virus spreading. Their remarkable efforts supported hundreds of colleagues to do what they needed to do from home, protecting both themselves and others. And within the space of a week, the IT team rolled out Microsoft Teams to all users to help colleagues keep in touch while working from home. So we've rolled that out to all users um, within that sort of last week of March, um, as we had around about two and a half thousand users starting to work from home. Within the first six months of using Teams, um, we were one of the top five users within the country. Um, we had sent about four million chat messages um, within the first six months uh, within Teams, uh, held around about 450,000 meetings via Teams. Um, and made around about three, 300,000 calls in Teams. Nationally, that equated to about 4 to 5% of the usage of Teams within the NHS. And alongside that, the Teams also supported the swift rollout of virtual outpatient appointments, either by phone or video, helping to keep patients safe and reducing unnecessary travel. We've gone from doing a handful of video consultations um, a month, we did implement them prior to COVID, um, to doing around about 2,000 video consultations a month. A patient just clicks on a link in an email and then effectively the consultation happens. And the results have been excellent in terms of patient feedback but also clinician feedback. 
with around about 95% of patients and our clinicians rating it as, as, as good or, or better. So our remote consultations, all of that, that non-face-to-face activity that I've just described, um, have, have saved, in, in terms of carbon emissions, the equivalent of 726 flights from London to New York. In fact, so you can see there, for example, the amount of time that we've saved for patients. That's one of the main pieces of feedback that we get from patients. If they feel this really shows how we value their time. So you can see that the remote consultations have saved over 23 years worth of patient time. We're valuing patients' time. We're not expecting them to you know, have the, the cost of ha taking time off work or the cost of, like I say, of parking and travelling. And so actually it's reducing, re reducing costs for patients as well. So nationally, they brought in a system called Attend Anywhere. Cornwall's quite a remote area in some places, so there were cons some consultants working off mobile phone networks. We, we obviously had a lot of consultation rooms that needed to be upgraded with uh, equipment to be able to use Attend Anywhere, so they needed cameras installed, they needed microphones installed, not all equipment had that as standard, so they either had a replacement laptop for a device and uh, for a PC, um, so that, that they could start using uh, the, the Attend Anywhere from both externally and both internally in the hospital in, in consultation rooms out to the patient. Through one of the most consistently challenging times, our colleagues across all services have shown incredible strength, bravery and resilience. As ever, they have worked above and beyond and continue to do so, going to extraordinary lengths to provide the best for our hospitals and our communities. This Christmas, it just came in like a whirlwind. Um, that was the first time that Cornwall had been hit really hard. Um, we prepared for an entire year for that moment. Um, but it felt like nothing we'd ever experienced before. Bringing myself to work every day, knowing that the first job I would do would be to walk around my ward and triage every single patient that was extremely unwell. And every day this was six or eight patients. Um, and I would give them the care that they needed, give them the instructions that they needed to fight for every breath that they, they could take and then also prioritise which ones just needed something to make them more comfortable at that time of the day. And that was a really horrible thing to do. Things change so quickly by the hour. A patient could be fine one minute and then they could be fighting for their life the next. And to try and explain that to, to relatives over the phone was impossible and it was heartbreaking. They had to make decisions that nobody should have to make, really. You know, if you had a family of four people, only two of them could come and see your loved one, their loved one at the end of, end of their lives. And, you know, I was looking after people the same age of my dad and, and seeing them die, and I just can't really imagine being told that I wouldn't be allowed to visit because there's a maximum of two people. And, you know, I, 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 I see the other end of it at the aftermath of it as well, where I'm responding to complaints and feedback from relatives who didn't get that chance. And I am just really sorry that they didn't get that chance. Because everybody deserves that chance. To support our COVID-19 response, colleagues from all areas, from corporate to clinical, were trained with the skills to work different roles and were redeployed to provide additional help where it was needed the most. As part of this, we trained over 120 more nurses in critical care skills, and our trauma team moved from the Royal Cornwall Hospital to St Michael's Hospital to ensure we could continue to provide excellent trauma care. And West Cornwall Hospital supported and cared for people in the far west of the county. Generally speaking, on the normal business, we, are, we can cater for nine ventilated patients. But currently, with the help of many partners in the trust, we have now flexed up to be able to ventilate 60 plus patients with COVID-19. I'm incredibly proud of the hospital. I'm incredibly proud of my team, uh, who's worked very, very hard to bring this change in place. Um, we've been able to do this by exploring so many avenues. 
We've had lots of training and upskilling of additional staff from the hospital. Um, so the wards have been very generous with releasing their staff to come over here to critical care to learn some of the, the machines that we use and some of the ways that, in which we're able to support our patients. Um, our staff here on critical care have been exceptional in their teaching of everybody else that's come across. There's training running every single day. Um, to make sure that the staff here are absolutely ready. We've had lots of estates works done. We've been able to move over into what are normally ward areas to expand our critical care space. And we've had lots of people ordering kit and equipment to make sure that every space we have for a patient has everything it needs in it. We couldn't have done what we did during the past 18 months without all our health and social care partners in Cornwall and the Isles of Scilly. From the overnight setup of Katus to care for our frail and elderly, to emptying of the hospital to enable space to care for COVID-19 patients. We are incredibly grateful for their partnership and their support. We know you watch the news and you listen to the numbers. We know that you're confused, a virus no worse than others. But let me tell you now, this virus is not the same. There's daily deaths and sadness and looking for someone to blame. Listen to us, please, when we tell you that this is real. We beg you to follow the rules so you don't feel the things we feel. Because what you see is numbers, numbers put with places. But what we've seen, it's different. It's families, names and faces. It's human hands we've held, it's husbands and wives we've told. It's thousands of everyday people. It's not just the frail and old. We do everything we can and we try to ease their fears. We put on big brave faces, but the staff room's full of tears. This isn't just some virus. This isn't media magic. What you see is numbers, but what we've seen is tragic. Although COVID-19 dominated our thoughts and actions, we were able to push forward on other things as well, including our green agenda and building Brilliant's construction program. We, with other health partners, declared a climate emergency in June 2020. And as part of our response to this, one of our colleagues, Ros Davies, had the brilliant idea to recycle the 10,000 face masks we use every day across our hospitals in Cornwall. The initiative had a huge response, both in the UK and globally, and we are enormously proud of this achievement. On our build programme, we completed our emergency department project, including a bigger and better resuscitation area, capable of supporting the vastly increased numbers of patients coming through the department since it was first opened nearly 30 years ago. We also pressed on with the groundbreaking for our new MRI and cancer treatment centre. And to make way, our ultrasound and vascular studies teams were relocated to other parts of the hospital. We are building for our future and looking to ensure we have the best facilities we can to care for the people of Cornwall, the Isles of Scilly and the many visitors to our beautiful part of the country. We look outwards too and make our mark on a national stage. We are proud of our research and development team which has been actively involved in the national COVID-19 trials including the third wave of the Novavax vaccine, the biggest study we've ever done. With both patients and staff keen to be involved, RCHT was the only site in the UK in the third wave of the trial to over-recruit. And we did so by 35%. We were part of the first wave of the recovery trials using the drug dexamethasone. And the SIREN study, which looked at whether participants had already had COVID and whether they carried antibodies for the virus. Our chief pharmacist led the rollout of COVID-19 vaccinations across the county, with colleagues and volunteers helping staff the many vaccination sites at our hospitals and across Cornwall and the Isles of Scilly. Their fantastic efforts helped to protect so many people and save lives. As we reflect on 2020 to 21, we want to say a heartfelt thank you to our staff, volunteers, patients, partners, and the communities of Cornwall and the Isles of Scilly for your resolve, your understanding, 
and your support of RCHT. We are here to care for you.